welcome all of you. Uh, um, as long as I've known uh, Reverend Count Dr. John Senyanyi, he's a man who keeps time. He keeps time to the dot. And you have seen that all these sessions start on time. And uh, I think he discovered the secret of timeliness. And uh, I do recall last time he talked, I think that was last year, he talked about that indispensable expendable resource, which is time. And a couple of things uh, come to memory. Um, so a couple of things come to memory. Perhaps we may see some of them here, that time perishable and irreplaceable. And also made, um, I think, another comment, which said that um, um, uh, every minute counts, uh, uh, every minute accounts if we use if we use it profitably, and also laziness turns proctiness, proctination, proctination procrastination, that word, which always uh, uh, takes me long to pronounce, borrows time from tomorrow. You see borrowing time from tomorrow, that's uh, something very, uh, very strange. And um, and I think he ended that, a few notes down, but uh, we should begin with the end in mind. Uh, we know that there is an end, that our time comes to an end and wise people people of character make the best use of time and so today we're going to hear him talk about timeliness and we know that people who do things in a timely manner are dependable um, they can also be relied on because you can count on them in accomplishing their deadlines on time. So the Reverend Canon Dr. John Senyoni, you're most welcome to talk to us about this very important thing, timeliness. Welcome, John. As it begins, let's pray. Father, thank you that once again we are reminded that uh, a very important um, uh, value uh, or core value of accuracy is timeliness. Lord, uh, we want to pray that you may uh, speak to John and speak through him even as he speaks to us so that the very thoughts and the very words he speaks may be the words you uh, wish him to speak. And Lord, we want to pray that this may not just be left here, but that timeliness may become part and parcel of what we do at HRS and as individuals, but also not only as individuals, but also a culture, what we do as the whole community of victory being timely. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs> Reverend <laughs> Dr. John Senyon, you are welcome. Yes, uh, thank you very much, uh, Professor Kawoya. I know some of these English words uh, that we learn along the way can be very tongue-tying. So I feel with you I struggle with some myself. Uh, in fact, earlier today, I was at another function where they were, you know, the, the MC is an American lady called Emily, but I could not pronounce her last name. <laughs> Very complicated. But thank you so much uh, for welcoming me, and it's a joy to be back, especially as we share on another topic. I do know that uh, my wife, Canon Dr. Ruth Senyonyi, is online, and but she's not yet home. She's on her way. Uh, today, in spite of the fact that it has been a public holiday, it has actually been a very busy time. So let me begin right away to share uh, the screens that uh, I'll be using. And... Uh, I, do, I hope you can see uh, what I have brought out here. Oops. Uh, do, 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 do. Yes, we can see it, Reverend. Okay. 
So I am going now uh, to start moving. There is something here that I don't want, but it is, seems to be staying there. Okay. So um, we are going to be talking about timeliness. And uh, I think it is one of those areas that we can never get tired of talking about. Uh, a friend of mine uh, was speaking and he was uh, talking about a pastor who preached the same sermon to his congregation for three Sundays. So the next Sunday, when they when he came, he said he was going to preach this sermon. And then they realized it was the same sermon he had been preaching the last three Sundays. So one person approached him and said, do you realize, Pastor, that you have been preaching the same sermon for the last three Sundays and this is the fourth Sunday? And he said, well, what is the use of preaching a different sermon when you have not yet got it? <laughs> that was his answer. Now, this whole area of timeliness, I'm glad is part of the core values of Ecure, is a topic that we cannot tire talking about because it's very, very critical for us to understand what it is all about. Now, just as a kind of recap, the core values, um, the core, our core values are those, and these core values are seven, or they are summarized in the word Christi. And I'm going through this fast. I don't need to waste time. It's Christ, honesty, result-oriented, integrity, stewardship, timeliness, enthusiasm. So far, we've covered five. This is number six that we are going to be covering. So the first five have been covered. So let me begin with uh, trying to understand what do we mean by tam timeliness. Uh, the reason I do this, uh, when we are talking to couples, especially uh, preparing them for marriage, and then we read from the Bible. The Bible says, husbands, love your wives. So we ask them, can you please define those words, that word? Or even wife, submit to your husband. Can you define the word submit? Can you define the word love? And uh, then they start struggling. They start juggling around because they've never, it's not that they don't understand it. They certainly do. But understanding it is one thing being able to capture what it is saying and uh, putting it in words can be extremely difficult. The word love, for example, I'm yet to find anyone who is able to define it and define it in a comprehensive way. Even dictionaries give little snippets of it. So here we go with the timeliness. Timeliness is- um, the I want to interrupt you a bit. Um, okay, sorry. Mm -hmm. I want you to use slideshow. There's on the on the on the left up up on the left. There's a thing that says use slideshow. Can you not that one? That's ending show. Oh, okay. Oh, now go to play. Yeah, play from slide one. There. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So all right. That's it. thanks. Okay. Now. We are dealing with, so I was on this slide, slide number three or four, that timeliness is to deliver expected results products at the right time or at the best time, best possible time. So it has to do with the time. Uh, another way to understand it is that is the quality of happening at the right time. You know, when it happens at the right time, oh, oh this has been so timely. That's what we normally say. So the word timely is, of course, an adjective, but timeliness is the noun. Or that it is occurring or being delivered within an expected time frame. For example, a student studying, if your program is lasting three years or four years or five years, when it is, when you finish it in three years, 
we can say you finished it in a timely manner. Now, there are many synonyms, and to be honest, I'm not, I'm not putting all of them here. Words that can be used that have similar meaning or that can be used in place of timeliness. For example, being prompt, opportune, seasonable, partners. And of course, the antonyms, those are the opposites, would be inopportune, late, delayed, tardy. Um, these are all words. Now, just look at that. I, I would want to point you to the part on the right, better late than never. Okay? Better late than never. That's a very common saying. Oh, better late than never. Better late than never. That is not a statement of timeliness. And you can see the best way to complete is to say, but never late is better. So don't say better late is never. Never late is actually better. Okay, here is a microfinance specialist and what he says. And just try to note the words that I have put in red are the words that bring out the whole aspect of timeliness. So he says, in business, and uh, he could have been talking of anything, any other work that you're doing, I believe the same principles apply. Timeliness is the efficient use of resources and the prompt delivery of services and products. Not the words efficient use, not the words prompt delivery. It measures how well a business uses resources and manages its operations to meet deadlines. You know, the issue of deadlines has to do with the time. Timeliness is a critical factor when it comes to strategic decision-making as timely decision-making can determine the survival of a business. And I would have added that the survival or the success or even the failure of a business, but he's talking about the survival of a business. The purpose of time in business is critical for prioritizing deliverables and meeting set goals. And I like this word prioritizing because, you know, one of the things where we fail on timeliness is simply because we are not good at prioritizing. So we kind of mix up things and someone is doing this and doing that. And so we fail to do the right thing. Now, so timeliness is then our use of time. Good planning and work study habits set a time frame. Let me just give you some two statements. I think just to illustrate this. If a lecturer said to you as students, I expect your coursework to be handed in. Or the lecturer may say, I expect your coursework to be handed in by April 30th, 2024. Now you can see that the second, the first statement is a mere intention, a kind of suggestion. While the second one is giving you a plan so that, in fact, the lecturer implicitly is saying, I expect you to be timely in handing in your coursework. And of course, success is not possible with the statement A because it doesn't develop anything. You know, you are going nowhere. What if I hand in next year? Yes, I have fulfilled it. Okay. So timeliness then sets a time frame. And as someone put it, timeliness is the seed of success. It's the seed of success. Now, I don't know how many of you are familiar with this animal here. It's called a sloth. <laughs> it's a sloth. It's a pro one of those very, very slow mammals, extremely slow. Okay. Now, may I say that many, especially here in Africa, we tend to be very lazy fair about life or even study or even work. In fact, we work as if 24 hours is 100 hours. We have time. There the word comes back, Professor Kawaya, procrastination is somehow acceptable to many of us. Procrastination. Now, you can never procrastinate and be a person who observes timeliness. I will tell you an example. I used a tailor 
and I wanted him to make a certain government as a clergyman. I wanted him to make for me uh, that clergy robe. And every time I would go to him, every time I would call him, he was just giving me promises. And uh, some of you probably have faced something like that with the tailors. Later, I remember talking to someone else about the same tailor who is he's also a clergyman. And he told me, oh, I stopped using that man. <laughs> now, do you see how timeliness fails you? In fact, timeliness, in reality, uh, lack of timeliness is laziness. That's why the Bible uses the word slothfulness. It's being sloth, you know, slothful. So you need to understand the importance of being timely. Now I'm going to focus on three things because I've talked about, and I think Professor Kawe has done a great job of reminding us what I shared last time. I want to talk about three things in particular. One, the expendability of time. That's expendable. You spend it. You know, don't ever imagine that time that is, is not spent. Secondly, I want us to get it in our minds that time has value. It has a price tag. It has a price tag. You know, many of us use time like there is no price to it. You go to a party. In fact, I was at a party and I gave them one hour and I said, I'm sorry, I'm not going to, I'm not going to be there any further. I have got to go and speak. I left. And was just going on. I remember one person who was invited. And the time was actually shown. And the person goes on talking and talking and talking. And I said, oh, my goodness. I think he must have talked for like 20 minutes when he was only be given just about five minutes or so. Thirdly, I will be focusing on the issue of accountability. It comes back. But time, inevitably, inexorably, that's, that's what the word is all about. Inevitably leads to accountability. So let's begin to talk about expendability first. Time passes. It's that simple. Time passes. Yesterday cannot be recalled. Tomorrow cannot compensate for yesterday. You know, where yesterday, whatever you did or didn't do yesterday cannot be, you cannot undo the time that you wasted. And I'm talking about time. You may say, oh, but I have put in my home, my coursework today. But it was expected yesterday. If you didn't do it yesterday, then, of course, you have caused a problem. It's like you are causing a traffic jam. So yesterday cannot be recalled. Tomorrow cannot compensate for yesterday. Remember always, and this is what I mean by time being expendable, time spent is irrecoverable. You can never get it back. A missed lecture or an assignment deadline is gone forever. Gone, 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 gone. It's not coming back. Okay? Time wasted has, secondly, time wasted has a domino effect. It results in missed opportunities. If you do what you are supposed to do yesterday and you do it today, it means what you should have done today has been pushed out of the way into a corner. And then it also pushes other things. And so that's what I mean, that it has a domino effect. Thirdly, mismanaged time results in lower grades. When you mismanage your time, you, your grades are going to be lower. But on a larger scale, at a corporate level, it slows progress. Say in an institution like AQRA, when you mismanage time, then it means Accurate cannot, do, cannot be run efficiently, cannot gain from time what it would have gained from your efforts. Now, bear in mind that each one of us, now as I speak now, I know some of you are workers, some of you are students. Have you ever seen a contract given to any worker that's not bounded by time? It's always bounded by time. Why? Because they expect timeliness. Timeliness. Just like you have your degree or diploma, that is also considered that like a contract. 
the degree you have a contract with Acura if you're a student and the uh, the, the university also has a contract with you as a student to finish that degree or to finish that diploma within a certain time. Imagine what happens if you don't. It's given a time. In fact, the regulator of higher education, National Council of Higher Education, says if it is a three-year program, it must be finished in not more than five years. But to say that not more than five years does not mean that you should then prolong your three-year program, three program to five years. Doing it in, they're just giving you some breathing space if somehow you are not very good with your time. So it's expendable. Employment contracts are time-bound with expectations. When you're given a contract in employment, as all of us, if you're a student, you're going to be given a contract. And when you're given a contract, it will say three years, it may say 10 years, or whatever period it gives you. But at the end of every year, or at the end of the contract itself, you're going to be evaluated. And you know what? The evaluation is, is to say, what have you done within the time of the contract? Even a marriage is bounded by death, the dissolution of a, of a marriage. Okay. Secondly, we want to talk about the price tag on time. Price tag. You know, wealth, development, and all take time to make. You can never make wealth out of time, outside time. Everything, the progress that is made is made within time. So you can see there is a price tag. And that's why I put here that it, this clock here is showing you some of the things, some of the time that has been wasted. And for that reason, it's not generating wealth. But if you use this time well, then you'll be making some dollars. Now, it's very interesting that the Bible uses time measurements for actions. It uses words like now, and I'm going to show you some. Now, when it says do it now, it's actually saying be timely. It's saying observe timeliness. It says now, and it talks about, it says that the now, what you do now, believe it or not, has eternal implications. In other words, time has a forever value. Many times we think that time only has value here. But when it says that it has eternal implications, it is saying that what you do now has implications in eternity, has a forever value. It's worth. And Matthew 25, if you read it for yourself, has parables. And each of those parables talks about time. Let me just talk about one, the stewardship of talents and resources. The master gives talents to three, uh, through three servants, and then he goes away. And after a time, comes back. And as we shall see, when he comes back, he asks for accountability. So the time itself, while the master is away, that time is supposed to be used to multiply the talents. That's what it's supposed to be used for. Listen, for example, to these verses. Talking about the price tag of time. Act 17, listen. And whatever I have put in red is to highlight for you that the Bible actually is conscious of time. It says, the times of ignorance God overlooked. But now, the word now, he commands all people everywhere to repent. Now, why doesn't he say, but he commands all people everywhere to repent? It's because he's putting in a time factor. That's what the Bible is saying. And then he says, because he has fixed a day. Now, what, how do you fix a day if it's not time? On which he will judge the world in righteousness by a man whom he has appointed. And of this, he has given assurance to all by raising him from the dead like we've just been celebrating with Easter. Or take, for example, 2 Corinthians 6.2. 2. 
Again, I put any words that have something to do with the time, that have something to do with the timeliness in red. For he says, in a favorable time, in a favorable time. And you know, when it says a favorable time, in the Bible, very often it is saying, at the right time, I listen to you. And in a day of salvation, I have helped you. And then he says, now is the favorable time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. He's giving time. It is saying, when you procrastinate about this, it has eternal implications like I, I was saying to you here. It has eternal implications because time has a forever. When he says there is a day that is coming, a day that is for judgment. Okay, we can also I just I just thought that I would relate this particularly for you who are very much in the healthcare field. Time and healthcare. Timeliness is critical. Essential in healthcare for the health of an individual cannot wait. You know, when you are dealing with an individual who is sick, you can't wait. Often timeliness is the line that divides between life and death. And I give examples there. If there is a bleeding head injury in an accident, if you don't arrest it and immediately investigate what is it and everything has to be done in time. What about cancer stage four? You know, how do you progress there? or a bleeding pregnant woman. All these are life-threatening uh, incidents. And therefore, you have got to be very careful in healthcare. Be timely. There is no room to waste. And I have an illustration here. One of our sons had a leg injury, very, very bad leg injury, which cut his artery on the leg. And this was at school. He was rushed to the hospital. And I mean, I could have said a lot more there uh, how everything happened and he was bleeding. Of course, they tied things, but you know the artery, you, you know people who are in healthcare, it just keeps on pumping the blood out of the body. And when he got there, I remember the surgeon, when he came, he tried to untie and the blood was just boom, 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 flowing out. And he immediately covered it and went in for surgery. When he came out, he said to me, he only had blood for 10 more minutes. Think of that. That's time. You cannot play with time when it comes to healthcare. The price tag is also true in academic institutions. I've already intimated on it. Timeliness is in the very fabric of academic institutions. When you are admitted, you are given a certain time within which to accept. That's why universities have an almanac, which says when the ev what the what events does the university have and when will they be. That's why you have timetables. This is the time for this class. This is the time for that class, or even governance meetings. All these are given time. If you don't give them time, it becomes a very disorganized academic institution. In fact, I have found that some institutions even have a policy on timeliness of student grades, a kind of chatter between the university and the students. You do the examinations at such and such a time and your grades will be out at such and such a time. It's there, you know, it's a policy. And the university commits itself to do that. What you do not do yields no fruit. Keep that in mind. What you do not do yields no fruit. If you do not plant in the rainy season, right now it's a rainy season here, you will not harvest in the dry season. It's just that simple. But you know the rainy season happens within time, so that's the dry season. Secondly, there is no credit for an assignment submitted after the deadly. <laughs> My wife, when she's uh, teaching for me, it's so long ago since I last taught, it's like 1991, since I last taught mathematics. Okay, I taught, I taught some theological pro uh, programs um, at Uganda Christian University. But you know, my wife is tough. <laughs> she tells her students, if your assignment does not come on such and such a day, at such and such a time, you will have no mark, no credit. And that's, how, that's what it should be. 
You need to be timely because the university is helping you to progress. The university is not there to encourage you to procrastinate and stay there and a three-year program then takes five years. That's not the purpose of an institution. What about tuition fees? When you pay tuition fees, I remember when I was heading a university, people coming to cry about fees. And what is very interesting, very few were poor. <laughs> Quite often they were rich. You can see that the problem was they were not timely with and they were not paying attention to when they are supposed to pay the fees. So if you do, if you pay your tuition fees late, it does not allow you to settle down even to study because you are concerned my fees are not yet paid, and uh, it does not help efficient management of the institution because if the institution doesn't have money, the institution cannot operate efficiently. Okay, the third that I want to share with you is timeliness is attentiveness to accountability. A person who is timely in what they do, they know that a time is coming when I'll be accountable. Simple. If it is coursework, you are doing that coursework and you're saying, I'm looking, I need to do this coursework at such and such a time, hand it in, because I have the examination so that I can focus on the examination. So there is that attentiveness to accountability. That's what I mean. Accountability evaluates and asks, what have I done with my time? You know, accountability is simply for you to account. You realize your account and you are answerable about your use of time to study or to work. That's a good thing for us. You know, many times we don't like these things. We don't like accountability. We don't want to be answerable. But I can assure you, it's good for you. And accountability is in everything, in everything. For example, now, we are doing this character building. Some students just don't want, they say, ah, I'm not going to attend this time. You know, for me, the experience that we had is that if a student does not attend 75% of the course being taught, that student cannot even sit for the examinations. These are simple rules in most institutions. Just to enable you. And many times they look like, oh, this university is being hard on us. No. You pay the, when you pay fees to me and I'm heading an institution, I have got to make sure that I teach you and you're progressing. If you don't attend class, then you're paying fees and I am not, I'm also accountable to you. I'm not actually giving you. It's like buying something from a shop and coming out without taking it. You're simply irresponsible. So we are accountable to two. First of all, we are accountable to God. Why? Because he's the one who created time. He's the one who created time. Listen to what it says in Genesis 1. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. And God saw that the light was good. And listen. And God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day. And the darkness he called night. And there was evening. And there was morning. And then he says, I should have put that in red, the first day. That is God who created time. That's the statement of how he created time. He himself is not within time. He created time for us to be used properly. So we are accountable to God. The problem is we don't see God. And somehow we don't feel the urgency to be accountable to God. Or sometimes we even just think, oh, well, if it is God, I'll pray tomorrow. I'll read the Bible to get tomorrow. I'll do it. And you know, the English say tomorrow never comes. But listen to what he says here in verse 9, 2 Peter 3, 9. The Lord is not slow to fulfill his promises. Some count slowness, but is patient toward you. Not wishing that any should perish, but that all should reach repentance. His patience is not intended to sanitize us against timeliness. 
It is intended that we use the time well. The consequences, of course, are dire and they are irreversible. And that is perishing, as he says there. I made reference to Ma Matthew before. The master gave his servants talents. Now each gave account how they used these talents. And the Bible says now after a long time, the master of those servants came and settled accounts with them. So there was a time there. And he was going to come. Accountability was coming. So let's remember, servants shall be answerable according to what they knew and how they used that knowledge. And those verses actually talk about that. Listen to what he says in Luke. And that servant who knew his master's will, in other words, when you know, but did not get ready or act according to his will, will receive a severe beating. Once you have knowledge, you become accountable. And he says the same thing in Romans chapter 2. But the one who did not know and did what deserved a beating will receive a light beating. Everyone to whom much was given, of him much will be required. And from him to whom they entrusted much, they will demand more. So friends, I'm saying to you, you are accountable to God. But secondly, you're also accountable to others. And who are these? Your use of time affects other people. Let's keep that in mind. It affects other people. For example, you visit a friend who is very busy, and we do this all the time. And you start talking. You haven't found out if the person has time. You just keep on talking, talking, talking. You're wasting their time. Or you make a phone call. <laughs> I hear people call me, hello, how are you? I am fine. How has been your day? And they have, they are totally unmindful. If they can talk, it's always wise to ask. Do you have time to, to, to talk briefly? It will only take two minutes. It will take five minutes. And then the person can tell you. But you know what? We don't realize we are accountable to others as well. And I give you a few examples here. The lecturers, you are accountable to them. Because they have expectations. They have talked much about that. They plan for lectures, assignments, when students should submit this work. And when the examinations will happen, timeliness helps them deliver their side of the customer charter. What about the family? They send you to university and you're studying. Maybe it's your husband, some of you are married or your wife, but it could even be your parents. Sometimes the parents... I have come across this. Parents send a child to university. They say, okay, when that one finishes, you will also go. So your time in school is budgeted financially and chronologically in terms of passage of time. So your tardiness, huh? your laziness, your slowness with study affects their other plans. Okay. And keep in mind, you cannot be accountable to God without being accountable to God's people. God makes that very clear. You are also accountable to friends. I have already said something about it. Your social life with friends should not consume all your time or intrude on their other plans. I show you a picture there of young people. They've gone out. They're having, And some of us love going out every weekend. And that social life is eating into time. That's what you need to keep in mind. It's eating into time. It's eating into your studies. eating into your... You cannot develop the habit of timeliness simply because you spend all of it just enjoying, just, you know, relaxing and so forth. But you're also accountable to yourself. Your purpose in life is achieved within time. If I were to ask you, do you have a career path? You're studying now. What do you want to be in five years? What do you want to be in 10 years? Many of us are studying only to get a job. I'm challenging you. Determine a time-related, time-bound career path. It's much better to set yourself a goal, however high, and hit a little lower. But if you aim at nothing, you get nothing. What about your study plan at the beginning of the semester? When you're starting the semester, can you set yourself a study plan and you say, I want to make sure I have done that I plan. I, uh, you know, I'm deciding to use my time 
to meet these expectations. And you know that you have a standard. That is accountability to yourself. And it's also important. Nobody else can do that for you. So friends, timeliness, and we're talking about timeliness and accountability. Your alertness to accountability grows in your in you efficiency. It grows in you efficiency and prudence of character. Because you see, the thing that you practice again and again and again and again becomes your habit, becomes your character. And that's what I'm saying. So consider your use of time. The verse there in Proverbs says, a simple man believes everything, but the prudent man carefully considers his ways. Consider your ways. Thank you very much. Every blessing in the risen Christ. Thank you. And you can see the words of our Lord Jesus Christ that he spoke on the left, my times. And he said that to uh, when he was dying on the cross, my times are in your hand. And he was quoting from Psalm 31. Use your time wisely. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, uh, Reverend Canon Dr. John Sinyoni. And uh, I've picked out a few lines that I will put in my office. <laughs> the next time you visit Zambia, if you find them, please. <clears throat> yeah, I would have picked them from this uh, lesson because sometimes we need to read and see these things continuously for people to change. I'll tell you, for instance, especially as um, health personnel, you find that you report for late, for work late, you start work late and you want to knock off late. I think these are habits that we should um, <clears throat> truly improve on because we're dealing with lives. Uh, this has been an interesting topic for me. Let me also just see what uh, people were sharing from the chat. Okay, so I think making specific programs matters for personal accountability. That is true. Glad to be on. I pray the Lord can help me redeem my time and use it appropriately. Life is most driven by time. <clears throat> it depends on how we use it for a specific uh, specific purpose. Uh, you can delay, but time doesn't delay. I think this was something said. With tellers, we actually don't talk. Yeah, I think tellers have a way of, uh, <clears throat> you know, doing their own things. Indeed, never late is the best. Uh let me see what else do we have. Okay, appreciations from everyone. Thank you very much for this understanding, Reverend. Thanks you. Thank you. God bless you. Okay, <clears throat> thank you so much. So indeed, we realize that this is a very uh, important topic for each one of us, regardless of what you're doing, whether you're a student or you're working or whatever it is you're doing um, uh, in life. This applies to each one of us. Thank you so much, Reverend, for sharing. And uh, before we close, allow me to call upon Professor Michael Kawia to help us close the session for today. Thank you, Tora. Thank you, Reverend Colonel Dr. John Senyanyi. Uh, uh, I've learned that in healthcare, time takes on a different dimension because time is actually life. And so let us be very careful how we use our time. Others who may waste away somebody's life. Now, um, uh, just as a reminder for students that all undergraduate students will have to be assessed regarding character building for this semester. And so if a question pops up somewhere in your, one of your papers um, on our core values or on what we've learned in these sessions, please don't be surprised because you have been taught and uh, you have to account for that. Like we have seen, we have account for the time we have spent. And one way of accounting is by passing exams. Let's pray. Father, I want to thank you for this uh, very important uh, session which you've had. We have learned that it's you who created time, though you live outside time, but you created that time so that we may make the best use of the life you've given us here. And that when we come before you, then we shall 
uh, be accountable and we shall uh, yes be um, found um, uh, in in uh, uh, in accordance with your will and so I want to pray that we may be able to use our time efficiently help us to know that time is expendable that once it has been lost you cannot get it back and that also there's a price tag on time and that if we use our time well then our whatever we do is going to be successful help us to re also remind us that um, timeliness um, is um, attentive to accountability and that we shall we are accountable to you we are accountable to others and we're also accountable to ourselves Yes, Lord, and as we sleep tonight, give us a peaceful sleep and um, help us, Lord, to use our time tomorrow and in the days to come very well. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay. Over to you, Tawera. Amen. Thank you so much, uh, Professor. And uh, that brings us to the end of today's uh, character building session. Thank you so much once again to our facilitators, um, to all the members of staff um, that have consistently been able to join us as well. Uh, Mr. Gift, kindly help share the link to the WhatsApp group, just in case we have people that are not on the WhatsApp group for character building. Uh, you simply just tap on the link to join the groups and you'll be there. So also to remind us that we have a YouTube channel. Uh, Professor has put it rightly. You will be assessed in character building um, uh, <clears throat> contents that we've learned. So please, if there's you want to go there for revision or you're looking for a particular topic, feel free to visit the YouTube channel and you'll be able to um, <clears throat> read and go through everything that has been said so far this semester. Okay, thank you. We can now uh, log off the meeting. Thank you so much. Have a blessed evening.